Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Spurs Up. At Spurs Up, if you're an avid fan, you know we love our two segment shows, and with a guest like President Pastides, me and Derek, we just had to get in on the action. So, President Pastides, thank you again for coming on for another segment. Go Cox. And uh, last time, uh, Mills and Mubaka, they had a bit more, you know, philosophical or deep questions. Mm -hmm. We're just going to talk about sports because that's what conversation. That's what we really want to <laughs> hear about. So, starting off, they mentioned it a little bit in their segment. Just talk about the Final Four and the experience, you know, being going back to New York, you know, spending time there, flying around all these different places in the month of, month of March. Well, let me start by saying I'm a superstitious guy. So once we started winning, mm -hmm. uh, I had my garnet jacket, I had a white uh, shirt, I had the same tie, the same pants, the same shoes. <laughs> let me stop there. <laughs> and uh, and I, I couldn't believe it. I have to tell you, going to Greenville and when the men beat Duke, I was, I think apoplectic is the word. Wow. It's like, is this happening mm -hmm. or am I dreaming? Mm -hmm. uh, the Duke fans were... Uh, very, very courteous, but they didn't know what to do. They didn't know how to lose, really. Right. I think they looked at it as a whatever game. And going in the locker room with uh, uh, being spritzed with uh, non-alcoholic stuff, by the way, and jumping up and down, and I think they even lifted me up, uh, some of the bigger guys, something I'll never forget. And then, of course, going on, going on from there. Mm -hmm. I think it was a actually... It was actually one of the more memorable moments in the past, I would say in the past 10 years for the university, just having that opportunity. I don't think anybody really expected it. It, it just was a momentum thing and it, and, it, and it ran in a way that I don't think we've seen in a while from, from, our, from, our, uh, from our basketball team. Kind of fast forward into the present day, how was it hosting the Final Four, or having that opportunity to host the Final Four, for, for, as from a presidential perspective, well, you how know, did that feel yeah, for you? Yeah, you know, I, I was uh, chair of the board of right. the NCAA, and so to be uh, at the Colonial Life Arena, uh, we watched uh, Duke play Central Florida, we saw thousands of fans come into Columbia, spend millions of dollars. And they were here for the practices. Even. Millions of dollars, by the way, mm -hmm. what a great thing. Now, I would have preferred to been in it. Right. But having said that, because I'm a competitive guy, but that was, uh, that was a different kind of thrill. And actually, you speak on your, your competitive nature. I'm, I'm kind of curious, just from a personal standpoint, because I too am a competitive person, what, maybe it was, maybe was it in your upgrade, upbringing or some point in your, you know, your high school career, college career, what brought you or drew you to athletics that makes you love it so much? Because you're, you're, you're a pretty sharp guy when it comes to our athletic department. You're, you're pretty keen on the equestrian teams, the basketball teams, football teams, et cetera. Where does that come from? Growing up in a neighborhood, uh, I was bilingual. And uh, look, uh, you know, sports was my way to survival. Because if you were good in stickball, strike box, sandlot baseball, you were gonna get picked. People wanted you. Right. So I went from that kid who maybe nobody wanted to a kid who they did want. Mm -hmm. And then number two, growing up a New York Yankees fan, uh, reading a lot, the Mickey Mantle biography, Roger Maris, I could name every uh, New York Yankee, Bobby Richardson, who's from Sumter, by the way, and a good <laughs> friend of mine. Um, I, they were my heroes. Some people have presidents as heroes, astronauts as heroes, uh, baseball players were my heroes. Right. So I got infected, I think, with the love of the game. Absolutely. So how much more special did it make that 2010, 2011, you know, back-to-back -back national championship for the baseball team for you? Well, you know, every pitch. I mean, Jackie Bradley Jr. is up at bat with two outs and two strikes, down by one run in an elimination game in the ninth inning. He took, he gets, the, he took the mental snapshot. He, he gets a hit, <laughs> uh, ties it up with a runner on base. Next guy brings him in. We win the game. And then we win 22 postseason games in a row as Gamecocks. You know, uh, swept through the next uh, World Series all the way, never lost a game in the postseason uh, for, uh, I think it was three years. So mm -hmm. phenomenal. And then you've had, over your time here, you've gotten to interact with a lot of, we'll say energetic coaches, Frank Martin, Don Staley, you know, Will Muschamp, Steve Spurrier, Ray Tanner. Who do you think was the most not difficult to, to deal with coach, but the most passionate coach, I guess I could say. That, you know, really, I, I, I couldn't answer that. They're passionate in their own way. You might think that, that Frank is more passionate than Don, but I don't think so. I think Don exhibits it in a different way. Mm -hmm. Baseball coaches are nervous mm -hmm. by design. They're superstitious. They kind of bite fingernails. 
Uh, Frank shows his, you know, you know, his emotion more outwardly. Uh, but Asia Wilson, I once asked her, how does Dawn handle halftime at a game you're supposed to be winning against an unranked team and you're losing? And uh, she imitated Don, 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 you know, she rolls the paper up and, you know, hammers it in her hand. So uh, she's as passionate as, mm -hmm. as all of them. Mm -hmm. And then how do you, have you seen the athletic program change over your time here? And what do you see for the future of it? Well, the quality, I don't think there's, I mean this, I don't think there's a university in the nation that has better facilities than we do now. I mean, you just pick a sport and I'll go toe to toe. The new with facility them. is amazing. The yeah, new facility especially is, for football. Is and, and, yeah, yeah, and uh, especially with the new football operations center. But not only that, you know, you go back to our beautiful athletic village, and nothing, nothing was here before I came on, and you know, and it's hard to manage that because the faculty want better classrooms, the students want better Wi-Fi. You know, there's only so much amount of money, but because we're in the best conference in the land, and I happen to be the president of the SEC right now, we are able to bring in enough money where athletics can take care of itself and continue to grow. Our new road and track uh, facility, I think that was the last one that needed to be upgraded. There is not a team, you name a team, there is not a team that hasn't had a brand new facility during my time here, and I'm so proud of that. Now, you know, I've, I will say, in your tenure as president here, you, you've dealt with a number of different adverse situations. Um, I remember last year we had the non on our campus movement. Um, there were a couple of unfortunate uh, deaths that, that took place in that last year. In spite of the adverse situations, how would you say that the sports realm of the, of, of the campus really drew the students together, or if at all, did you feel that, because I mean the Final Four run was, was was around the time where some of the some of the things took place, um, as well as mm -hmm. you know the the like I like I mentioned earlier the suicide. How mm -hmm. do you feel that athletics played a role into that? Because I personally felt that watching some of the teams make their runs, mm -hmm. uh, specifically the women's team and different things of that nature, right. it really drew it really drew a lot of people together to to yeah. put aside differences and, and focus on the 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 university's family aspect yeah, as a whole. A good, it's a great question, but there is a fine line. You know, when we had a student, student suicide, we also had a very important uh, athletic victory. And I tweeted something about the victory and a bunch of students thought it wasn't right. Right. They thought it was not appropriate to celebrate. I was looking to use that mm -hmm. as a way not to forget what had happened or deny it certainly, but to bond, move, move ahead together. So it's not easy. Uh, when you're grieving to also be celebrating, you know, uh, and uh, but by and large, I think uh, uh, athletics, Gamecock athletics reminds us that we're a family and that uh, in time of victory or defeat, in times of exaltation or uh, or tragedy, mm -hmm. um, th that is what what life is all about. Fantastic. Well, again, President Pasides, thank you so much for coming on today. It's been a pleasure having you on our show. I can't think of a better way to end our season. And until nor mine. <laughs> nor my season. Nor my yes, absolutely. Nor your absolutely. season as well. And I know the campus is going to miss you dearly, but it's not going to be your last time being no here. Way. No and, way. And until next time, South Carolina, spurs up. <laughs>